Hello everyone, this is Fred Lackey and we're together today because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about safety. Uh, before we start on that though, I would like to tell you that we have had a difficult year this year with the pandemic. Uh, we have been fortunate and very thankful here at Howells that our business has remained strong and that things are still going well for us and we've got a lot of good customers that are still depending on us and we're very thankful for that. Uh, as I said, today we want to talk about safety. And I know that being safe sounds like a common sense thing, but that is not always the case. Truck driving was actually deemed to be one of the top 10 most dangerous jobs in America in 2019. So part of our reason for making this video today is to help refresh each one of you and to keep you safe while you're on the road. Every one of you is important to us and we want to make sure that we can do everything possible to help keep you safe on the road. Now we all know there are a lot of rules and regulations involved with driving a commercial motor vehicle. And sometimes when there's a lot of rules and regulations, uh, we tend to want to just try to be compliant. And when we're compliant, we're basically just using good manners and doing our best to follow those rules. What we really want to step into is obedience. Uh, and being obedient means that even though we may not fully understand something or it may not be what exactly we want to do, we will do those things properly uh, based on what uh, we know is right and no one else is even watching. So please remember that as you go through your day and driving your commercial motor vehicle. Also, I want to tell you if you would, please pay close attention to all aspects of the video there will be a few questions at the end, and those questions are going to allow us to have a good record of attendance uh, for this safety video. So I'd like to start out, uh, first item is to talk about auto liability claims. Uh, that's one of the, the biggest driving factors of insurance costs uh, anymore. And over the last three years, Howells has filed 47 claims with our insurance carrier. 36 of these 47 claims were caused by one of our own drivers. 11 claims were caused by the other vehicle's drivers. Uh, in a recent article I read in Industry News uh, talking about nuclear verdicts and how to avoid them, approximately 75% of accidents involving a commercial motor vehicle have been caused by the driver of the automobile. However, the way the plaintiff's lawyers work these days, trucking companies certainly don't win 75% of those cases. So that's why it's so important for us to be safe on the highway and avoid accidents whenever possible. And you have to remember, sometimes an accident is truly an accident. Good drivers do make honest mistakes sometimes. And we do realize that can happen. But it's still important to do everything possible to maintain a safe driving on the highway. Our claims per million miles driven over the past two years is the following. In 2018, we had 2.7 claims per million miles driven. In 2019, that number dropped to 1.5 claims per million miles driven. That is a great, great improvement. We're thankful for that. We thank you for being safe, and we ask you to continue on that, and let's continue to decrease uh, our claims per million miles, as that is a, a great measurement uh, used in the trucking industry. The next topic I wanted to talk to you about was the uh, auto liability frequency of claims, and that's which claims do we have the most often. And over the past three years, uh, our top claim for frequency has been side swipe and lane change. Now, side swipe and lane change uh, happen frequently as it's difficult sometimes to see. People get in our blind spots. And there's a few things I wanted to tell you about that you can use as tips to help improve and avoid these type of lane change accidents. You can properly adjust your mirrors during pre-trip uh, inspections. If you enter a multiple lane highway, try to merge in as best you can, not just bully your way in because you've got a big tractor trailer. Whenever possible, drive in the right hand lane. Sometimes there'll be instances where you'll need to pass, somebody's slow moving in front of you, but as much as possible, try to maintain that right hand lane. Always use your turn signals and make sure you get your turn signals on far in advance to give other people the opportunity to know where you're going to be moving. Be especially alert when you're going by an entrance uh, ramp if you're on the interstate. These are times where cars will come up and they may get in your blind spot and it's difficult to see. And so we want to make sure that uh, you're aware of that anytime you're passing an entrance. 
And finally, keep your eyes moving front to the sides, both mirrors and back to the front. Eye movement is critical to keeping alert and knowing what's going on on the highway. So please remember those tips to help avoid lane change accidents. Our second most frequent claim is right hand turn or right hand turn squeeze. Uh, we've had several of these claims during the past three years. Uh, and here's some tips we have that hopefully can help you prevent those kind of accidents from occurring. Uh, obviously conduct a good pre-trip inspection, making sure your mirrors are properly adjusted and your lights are working properly. Be sure you signal well in advance so that the other motors know what your intent is and, and what your next move on the highway is going to be. Be sure the intersection is clear and that you have a good path to finish your uh, turn. Uh, avoid any situations where you might have to stop during the turn or in mid-turn, which can be a problem. Properly position your vehicle so that you can make the right-hand turn. And the final point would be remember your trailer swing as you're completing your turn. That is a very important piece of finishing a good successful turn and avoiding an accident. The third most frequent claim we've had over the past three years is a tie between stationary objects, hitting those, and also backing accidents. Uh, these are typically two simple things we could avoid and again reduce our frequency of our claims. Here are some tips for uh, helping prevent stationary object collisions and backing accidents. Uh, number one, make sure all your mirrors are in place and in good condition and well adjusted. Make sure your warning flashers and signal lights are all installed and working properly. Be alert to people in the surrounding areas. Uh, sometimes people on the sidewalks or driving up can be a problem. Turn your radio off, roll down your windows, it enables you to hear better in case something's going on or somebody might uh, come up behind you. Use your horn to alert people that you're getting ready to make a move or you're getting ready to back up. If you're backing into a dock, you must make sure your trailer doors are open, make sure they're properly secured so that they don't swing open and hit another piece of equipment. Make sure you access the area you're in before you start your uh, move, particularly on backing. Look for overhangs, any signs, trees, things that could cause a problem. Try to avoid blindside backing when possible. Never back out into a street or into traffic. Uh, I would remind you that when you're backing up on a road or into traffic, nothing good ever comes out of that. Uh, if possible, if someone's around to help guide you, use them as a spotter and ask them if they're willing to help. And if you need to back for a long distance, make sure you get out about halfway through and recheck your surroundings and be sure everything is still clear. Next, we'd like to move on and talk about auto liability, the severity of the claims. And when we talk about severity, we're talking about uh, the dollar amount we spend on paying for claims. That's much different than the frequency. A lot of stationary objects that are high frequency might be uh, small dollar claims. But the severity talks about claims that are very expensive and the insurance and Howells Motor Freight ends up paying a lot of money. Over the last three years, um, side swipe, lane change again, has been our most severe claims with dollars paid. And we currently have one large claim that's actually driving this number up. And it's a claim where uh, we did make a lane change improperly and we're currently involved in a lawsuit uh, and trying to work out a solution for that claim. Second is backing up and particularly on a public road. As I mentioned earlier, it's, it's never a good idea to back up on a public road. Uh, when we do, typically cars get behind us, we cannot see them and it ends up uh, causing an accident, creates a lot of damage to the vehicle and sometimes injures the people in the vehicle. So please, please, don't back up on a highway, try to look for any other option available uh, to get turned around or moved uh, versus making the backup. Um, we have a lot of data on our violations for unsafe driving over the past two years. Uh, one of the uh, most highly ranked defenses we have is obviously a handheld mobile device while operating a commercial motor vehicle. Uh, for several years now that has been prohibited. Uh, you cannot be using a handheld mobile device and we want to reiterate again today uh, do not do that while you're driving. If you have to use your handheld device pull off the road into a safe spot before you use it. Failure to obey traffic control devices. We've had four of those offenses over the last uh, two years. Uh, that could be not obeying a yield sign, a stop sign, a stoplight. 
So make sure that uh, you're properly following the uh, road signs that you see in front of you. Lane restriction violations. We've had four of those as well. Uh, lane restrictions lead to accidents and lead to those side swipe lane change accidents. So please make sure you maintain your lane and make sure you stay in lanes approved for trucks. Uh, the last two we have is failure to wear a seat belt and also unlawfully parking on a roadway. Very dangerous things. Uh, during the 2020, there have been four accidents on Interstate 81 in Virginia. Commercial motor vehicles were involved and those drivers, all four of them, ended up losing their lives in those accidents and none of the four were wearing their seat belt when the accident occurred. So we cannot tell you how important it is to always wear your seat belt and we do expect you to wear your seat belt at all times. Unlawfully parking on a highway, uh, I know this has been talked about in the past. The only times you should ever be parked on the side of a highway is in the event of an accident or if you have a breakdown. Uh, there's no other reason to park on the side of the road. That can only contribute to an accident happening. And again, just this week, there was an accident with a fatality on Interstate 81 where there was a tractor trailer parked on the side of the interstate. So again, uh, make sure you find a safe haven, get off the interstate, don't park on the side, don't park on the on-ramps, and make sure you've got a place that's safe that you go to to park in the event uh, you need to get off the highway. All these unsafe driving maneuvers and behaviors can lead to accidents, and that's why it's important for us to bring those to your attention today. As we move on, there's some paperwork items we also want to talk about. One of those is roadside inspections. Uh, the number of roadside inspections has decreased during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, but when you do receive a roadside inspection, we need those turned in timely. Uh, we don't need you to hold those for two weeks or three weeks. Please get those in because se several states require us to sign off on those and return them if there's a violation. Also, it gives us a chance to address those issues and get them corrected. If there's a roadside inspection with a mechanical issue, uh, those are sent to the shop so they can be looking for that piece of equipment and help get that rectified. Yellow safety vests. We want to make sure everyone is wearing their yellow safety vests at all times. Uh, this is an important thing to keep you safe and to help the drivers uh, see that you're walking through a parking lot uh, and that you're out there. And the yellow safety vest is a proven way to uh, reduce people getting hit. And so we don't want to see anybody without their yellow vest uh, at the terminals, walking through the parking lots, use them at customers, use them at truck stops. It's a very important tool and it's an easy one to use to help protect everyone. Our next topic uh, we'd like to review is our CSA Compliance Safety and Accountability Basic Scores. Uh, we talk about these frequently. It's something we review here every month at the home office. Um, there are seven different categories that we get uh, measured on and these are important measurements. Uh, because it lets shippers see that we're a safe carrier. Uh, it allows us to get more business because they know we're going to do a good job and safely get their product to where it needs to go. And it also helps us with our insurance carriers and to get the best possible insurance rates when we have good scores on our uh, CSA basics. Our basic scores are very good and they've actually been improving. Our crash indicator and maintenance basics uh, both were a little bit up over the last couple months, but they have been improving and dropping. I want to remind you to continue to perform good thorough pre-trip inspections and also good post-trip inspections that will allow uh, fleet maintenance to do their job, get our equipment uh, in proper working condition, and make sure that it's in good shape for when we're out on the highway. And when we do get inspected, uh, we'll get no violations on those. So again, our maintenance score has improved dramatically and we want to see that continue as well as our crash indicator. Uh, we don't get measured on hazardous materials as we don't haul those and our other four basics are in really, really good shape right now. And we've got excellent scores there as well. So thank you for your efforts there and continue with the good job uh, that we're doing on those scores. Next we'll talk about critical events and I know this is something we talk about all the time. Uh, it's an important subject. Um, we're still seeing too many critical events. Uh, over speeds over 70, excessive over speeds over 72, stability control events and hard braking events. Remember it's important to control your speed based on the road conditions and traffic conditions, the congestion that you're in, and also to maintain a safe following distance. And as we, we've talked about in the past, cars make it difficult to maintain that safe following distance. They'll cut you off, hit the brakes in front of you. 
We do know those things are going to happen. But again, please do all possible to control your speed, maintain that safe following distance, don't be distracted while you're on the road. The truck sends us the information as soon as it happens. And uh, technology has gotten to the point where everything is instantaneous. Uh, it gets to us quickly and we're able to get back with you. And as you know, some of your driver managers and terminal managers have been talking about these critical events with you. So continue to be aware of that and continue to drive safely and uh, not have those things happen. I know you wonder why is that so important or why do we harp on critical events all the time? Well, I was reading an article in the Commercial Carrier Journal and again talking about nuclear verdicts and how uh, trucking companies are just getting hammered uh, when they go to jury trial over an accident. And in fact, many trucking companies in 2019 went into bankruptcy due to the fact that there were so many high verdict claims going against these companies. What will happen is if you're in an accident, anybody else involved, if they decide to file a lawsuit against Howells Motor Freight, they'll subpoena all the records they possibly can. And that will include these critical events. And if you're a driver that's been driving for 15, 20 years, but they go back over the last three years and see you've had numerous critical events, they're going to use that to paint a picture of you being a bad driver and a bad person that doesn't care about other people on the highway and the safety of others on the highway. Therefore, the cleaner your record, the better chance we have to work with you and paint a picture of you being a good driver and that you do work to drive safely at all times. Huge crash settlements are just continuing to make it difficult for carriers. And uh, it's difficult, like I said, for them to stay in business. Many faced bankruptcy last year. And just to give you an idea about verdicts, in the southeastern U.S. this year, the average uh, claim or verdict a jury trial was $17.5 million. That is an astronomical number, and it's a number that many people can't afford to pay. And insurance companies are raising rates because they are fearful of having to pay these claims. And that $17.5 million was up from the $16.9 million in 2018. So please continue to work to avoid these critical accidents. Do your best to maintain that safe following distance and also control uh, your speed on the highway. Next, we'll uh, talk just a little bit about electronic logs. Uh, obviously, electronic logs are just like critical events. The truck's going to tell the story. The information is instantaneous. So the technology today doesn't allow you to keep information from being uh, transmitted or known to other parties. And so therefore, it's important for you to work hard to be obedient and to do the right thing and to follow the rules and regulations. Uh, our next topic we need to review is OS&D, over, short, and damaged. As you know, this can be a, a problem that can be time consuming. It can cost us money. Uh, I know it can be an aggravation to you as a driver uh, when you're out trying to plan your day. I want to remind you that we need all discrepancies for OS&D reported timely. Uh, when you fail to report an OS&D timely, uh, we're not able to advise the shipper of what your discrepancy was. And when we can't let them know, that opens up Howell's Motor Freight for a claim. And claim dollars are just money that we're throwing out the door uh, that we can avoid if we make the proper reports to the shipper. Also, it's going to mean that you're going to have a write-up in your file for failing to report the OS&D on time. So please be sure when you have discrepancies that you send those in on your Qualcomm. Uh, make sure you check your bill of ladings before you leave the shipper, or the consignee, excuse me, so that you make sure you know if there's a discrepancy to be reported. Also, we don't accept bill of lading signed uh, subject to check or subject to count. If they attempt to do so, if that receiver attempts to do that, and you are able to speak with them, please let them know we don't accept that. And also, you need to try to contact OS&D as soon as someone's available. Uh, so that we can try to help report that back to the shipper and protect Howell's motor freight. There are several pieces of required information we need when you report an OS&D item. We need the order number, we need the seal number, we need the item number of each product that you're talking about, whether it's over, short, damaged, or refused, and we need to know the quantity. Uh, and you can list up to three items per each message you send in on the Qualcomm. Uh, you could have one overage and one short, or uh, two different overages and one damage. So you can put up to a total of three items, but we need to know exactly the order number, the seal number, the item number that's most critical, and the quantity of, of cases, boxes that you have a problem with. Did the customer accept something? A lot of times we don't know if they kept an overage or a damage. 
you have to let us know if it was refused or not. Sometimes there'll be an overage and they'll take it. Sometimes a carton's crushed, but they'll take it. Sometimes when that happens, they'll refuse it and put it back on the trailer. And it's important for us to know that when you don't answer that question, we don't know the full story of what happened. If the product is refused, we need to do all we can to find out why it was refused. Uh, hopefully they've notated on your bill of lading what the problem was. But if they don't, and there's someone you can speak with, uh, we need to find out what the problem was and why they refused it. Maybe it wasn't on the PO. Maybe it was double shipped. Maybe it was damaged, crushed. Uh, just let us know so we can work with the shipper to get that rectified. One additional thing we would like you to start doing, if at all possible, is to take a photo of the bill of lading if you have an OS&D exception. Uh, and that would be all pages. Sometimes there's more than one page to a bill of lading. So if you take a photo of those pages, you can email those to Glenna Delp, and that's Glenna, G-L-E-N-N-A underscore Delp, D-E-L-P, at HowellsMotor.com. Also, you can text it to 540-676-3411. That's 540-676-3411. Three, four, one, one. By having a picture of that bill of lading, all the pages, Glenna has a better opportunity to use that along with your Qualcomm message uh, to talk to the shipper, get proper disposition, and help avoid any claims uh, for the future. So please, we're asking you to start doing that, and that would be a great help to us. Uh, Glenna has many things going on during the day, and that would be a great benefit to her and help to her. I know she would welcome you starting to do that uh, to help her with the OS&D. And one more thing that I did forget to add on OS&D is that Glenna sent an email out uh, earlier this week, and it was about Mars Wrigley OS&D exceptions. And there's three critical things that were on that email that had an attachment that she had highlighted in yellow that you need to report to her for Mars and Wrigley. And again, if she gets a photo of the bill of lading, that would help. But those three items are the uh, bill of lading number, the item number, and the lot number. And those are all three listed on the attachment she sent. So please, if you haven't looked at that email, uh, open that up, look at it, and that'll help you know what she needs for Mars Wrigley exceptions moving forward. And now we'd like to uh, go to Robert Crawford who will speak to you about a few items in relation to fleet maintenance. Thanks Fred. My name is Robert Crawford. Um, excellent points on the LD and reporting OS&D. OS&D man is critical and following your workflow and the requirements that we set forth for you through the LD mandate is very important. You know, that ties into pre-trips and post-trips. You guys hear about this all the time. And we know DOT requires one in a 24-hour period for a truck and for a trailer. But pre-trips and post-trips are much more than that, particularly to a maintenance program. We monitor these. We use these to support you guys out on the road and reduce your downtime. Here at Howells Motor Freight, we like to see at least a 15-minute pre-trip. I know we may not require that by DOT, but 15 minutes is a, it's an ample time to do an accurate and thorough pre-trip. Those that have been through orientation with me, they know and have seen the example that we have and what we'd like to see from a pre-trip. Um, you know, you need to be able to make decisions to reduce risk, but more importantly, if you're going to be there doing a pre-trip, you should be able to explain it to a DOT officer or to Fred Lackey, our safety manager. If, if you at any point feel like you don't have an accurate response for that, go back and check again. Making decisions and having that mindset, if you have to, you know, make every decision as if you have to explain it to a DOT officer, it's, it helps develop a mindset of, of thoroughness and professionalism, and that's going to develop confidence for you guys. DOT officers are not to be feared. They're out there to do a job. And, you know, believe it or not, they have a lot of respect for house motor freight, particularly at our local terminals in those areas. But how you present yourself is very important. That's how you dress, the cleanliness of your truck, the organization of your paperwork. You know, we do a lot of, we, in, during orientation, we show you an example of what your truck book should look like. We make sure you're a DOT legal before you leave. You know, why just maintain that? Isn't it easy just to hand a book to a DOT officer and not have to worry about anything else other than what he wants you to do? And the cleanliness of your truck, you know, when that DOT officer or, or whoever's inspecting you opens that thing up, it cleanly, the cleaner it is, the more professional you are, the, you know, the less attention that you're going to draw. And in addition to that, you know, we have technicians here 
we are we are very respectful of your personal belongings but that cleanliness of the truck remember we're inside your vehicle trying to get you up on the road as quickly as possible and the you know having to work around some paper or some things that shouldn't be in the way you know just take the time and, and clean it up and keep it nice reporting breakdowns everybody's familiar with our breakdown number in your safety manual is a yellow page there's only three numbers that you need those three numbers are critical that you use every time for a correct response time you know we're real people we're trying to listen to your information come up with a contingency to get you repaired as quickly as possible and that takes a few minutes so including your truck number state the location as if uh, the nearest mile marker and highway nature of your problem and loaded or unloaded and just that information spoken clearly on a phone allows us to uh, listen to that voicemail come up with a response and then we can call you with information versus having to call to re-verify the nature of your problem um, when you do a, D, a VIR, especially on a trailer, we need to know if it's loaded, unloaded, nature of problem, and where it is. We have tracking systems, but that information right there speeds up and reduces the downtime that it takes to, uh, to get you repaired and up and going. When leaving voicemails, same thing. Voicemails are, are a wonderful tool that we can have to go back and re-listen to verify information. However, if you don't get a response within 15 minutes, call back. It, there's a, the way the phone systems work here, it could have gone to someone's computer who may be out of the office. So 15 minutes, allow us that, call us back. After hours, same thing, we're real people. We all have more than one job, we care about you. But I have to handle the things that I would be handling at home while listening to your information and coming up with a breakdown plan. Allow us ample time to respond to you. Same thing, 15 minutes. If it's a little longer than that and you've left thorough information, rest assured I'm already looking for a vendor and I'm going to call you with an answer versus having to talk a few again to start the breakdown procedure over. Fueling reefers, man, I know you drivers are burnt out on that, but everybody knows three quarters of a tank or more. But everybody also knows that it has been hot, and I mean real hot. So when the temperatures rise, the con fuel consumption is also increased. So maintain that three quarters of a tank. But more importantly, three quarters, don't, don't choose the minimum. Every time you fill that reefer and completely top it off, you're extending the time that that thing is gonna be able to be sitting on a lot, and you're increasing the time that it, it, or you're increasing the probability that when you need an empty trailer, it's at that three quarter mark. So you can, don't have to lose time to fuel it again. So drivers take care of each other. If you're pulling in and you're tight on, or if you've got the hours of service available, just fill it up. You're helping the next guy. And I always tell you guys, having driven here, that might be your trip home on a Friday. So if you didn't fuel the trailer, karma will get you. I'm not telling you guys anything that you don't already know about traffic and road conditions. And you guys know how's motor freight, we don't want you on the shoulder. And my job as part of the maintenance pro team here is to not have you on the shoulder or at very least reduce that time that you're there. If you're on the shoulder because of a breakdown and you can't move, after 10 minutes we need those reflective triangles out. If you're going to be parked on the road and you need to put those triangles out, please do the breakdown skew before you get out. That's going to help ensure that you're documented and as you're out uh, doing what we need you to do with the triangles, we can already see that that's been done and initiated and covered. Um, if you can move it at all, if it's safe after you've done an equipment check, let's get you off of the road, at least to the next shoulder, and if we can't do that, please be on the phone with me immediately and communicate clearly the nature of the problem and if or you can or cannot move. Now, I believe in leadership by example. I'm wearing a safety vest. I wear it all the time and even my coworkers make fun of me. But I'm telling you, if you're in a truck and you are on the shoulder or you need to get out and do anything on the side of the road quickly or at a truck stop or rest area, these things will save your life. They're a little hot and I, I, I drove here so I didn't wear mine the entire time that I drove. But if I got out, particularly for a DOT inspection or anything, just put it on. Even if you're going in and out of the truck stop, man, what if someone runs over you in the parking lot? Having that vest on really makes a difference because not everybody's experienced as you guys are. When we talk about post trips, you know, we need to do a pre-trip and post trip again because DOT requires it. Post trips and equipment checks are vital. You drive 600 miles, you're tired and you're hungry, but you got to get out anyway to do your business. Do a walk around. Walk around your vehicle, that's truck and trailer, every time you get out. 
because you don't know what's happened while you've been driving down the highway. A good example of that is I had a, a new driver a couple weeks ago. He picked up a truck that has had all its complete services, did an accurate post trip that evening after shutting down and we discovered a wheel seal. He communicated uh, directly and accurately and clearly and we were able to get that driver going within 90 minutes. It, and he rolled on happy as can be. And once again, you can't hear it enough. Thank you for all that you do. Um, you know, it's more than just a job. We're all a family here, we're all a team. We all wanna get you home safely on the weekends. We wanna get you paid as well. I mean, I've gotta mention that for you guys. Thank you guys for all that you do. Now back to you, Fred. All right, I've just got a couple more things to go through with you and, and uh, we'll be finished up on the safety portion today. First of all, coming September 29th, 2020, there's gonna be some changes in the hours of service regulations. Uh, you may already have heard about that. There's been some uh, changes that have been passed by the FMCSA. Adverse driving conditions is going to change where they'll add two hours to both driving and on-duty time. Uh, the 30-minute break will be required after eight hours of driving time instead of prior to the eighth hour as it currently is. Sleeper birth provision is going to allow for an 8-2 or a 7-3 split. And there's also going to be some small changes to the short haul exemption. So I tell you that in advance, not to start doing that, still maintain the current regulations, but on September 29th, there will be uh, those changes coming forth. We will keep you posted and we'll remind you on the day they go into effect and uh, make sure everybody understands what's uh, going on with those. Basically, that's the items I wanted to cover today. I know that covering safety items is not always an exciting topic. Uh, it's not something that's, uh, that's real exciting to listen to. Uh, but I wanted to thank each one of you for everything you've done, particularly over the, the past several months during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I know you've all worked hard. Uh, it's been some difficult times dealing with the situations that are going on today in the world, but we've done a really good job and I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for Howl's Motor Freight and, and that we're uh, still continuing to move forward and move strong and your efforts have been a great part of that. It's been a help uh, to the American public in the areas where we serve, getting products delivered, getting food delivered, uh, getting medical supplies delivered. And so we know without your hard work and your dedication and your professionalism, uh, these things would not have uh, happened and things would not have kept moving uh, for the American public like we would like for it to. So thank you very much for all you do and continue to drive safe and have a great, great week ahead. Thank you.